When dealing with multi-tenant application, you sometimes need to perform some background tasks for every tenant. This can become challenging, especially if you are using custom tenant dependency injection containers. In this video, I'm going to show you how to structure your multi-tenant background services. We are going to develop a robust and organized method to create multiple background services for multiple tenants. And as a bonus, we are going to optimize these services to run in parallel instead of the default sequential behavior. Stay tuned till the end so you don't miss anything. Okay, so I created an MT web API project. For the multi-tenant application, I'm not going to focus on how to resolve a tenant. Instead, I'm going to only focus that we already have a tenant service that can provide us with a list of tenants. So for that, I'm going to create a new class, tenant service. Let's have first an interface, I tenant service, and we only care about getting a list of tenants. I'm going to use a string to identify the tenant in this demo. But yeah, feel free to use an interface, iTenant, or anything else. So let's implement the interface. And here we can simply return task from result. And we can return tenant1, tenant2, tenant3. Now in our program.cs, let's register that tenant service. So builder.services.add singleton. In this way, we can inject iTenant service and we can get the list of registered tenants. So far, so good. Now, if we want to create a background service, you simply create a new class. Let's call it multi-tenant background service. And you can implement background service, the abstract class. Let's first inject iLogger of multi-tenant background service. And here, you can simply do while stopping token dot is cancellation requested. While the cancellation token is not requested, let's log some information here and we can do a small delay so we can perform some background service operation. Let's pass a cancellation token to the delay as well. Okay, to register the multi tenant background service. You can simply in your program.cs do builder.services.add hosted service and you can do multi tenant background service. Fine. Now, if we are on our application, you notice every one second we are printing running multi tenant service. Fine. So our background service is working. So now let's try to implement multi tenant approach for this background service. We can start by injecting the i tenant service private read only i tenant service so the first thing that you think about is hey let's get all the list of tenants and start performing action per tenant so inside our while loop here we can get the list of tenants var tenants equal await tenant service dot get tenant async now since we have a list of tenants we can simply loop through all the tenants so for each tenant in tenants now here we can perform any background action for that tenant. For now, I'm going to call another method, execute per tenant async, gonna pass it a tenant and the cancellation token. Let's create the method. And here let's do a delay two seconds and we can print and log running tenant background service let's pass the cancellation token as well to the task delay now running the application theoretically we are going to have a successful build and a successful run for all the tenants so running tenant 2 or running tenant 3 we are doing delay for one second so that's the loop tenant 1 tenant 2 tenant 3 that is perfect we have now one service, one background service that is running for multiple tenants. But that is not efficient as the way that we build it because every time that I need to create a new service, I need to get the tenant service, loop through all the tenants and implement whatever action that I need. For that, I'm going to change the flow to create a custom multi-tenant action that we can inject to our multi-tenant background service. Let's create a new interface, I multi-tenant action. If you're liking this video, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and consider joining my mailing list. It is in the description below. And we only have one method, which is execute async. 
we are going to pass the tenant and the cancellation token. Note here, string tenant here, because we are using a string identifier for the tenant. But if you have a custom interface, you can inject iTenant and the same thing will be applied. But for now, for this demo, it's a string and that is enough. So yeah, we created iMultiTenant action. So let's say our first action is to print hello. So we can create a class, public class, print hello action, I multi tenant action. So here we already inside the method with a tenant as a parameter. So we can perform some tenant specific actions. Now it's a simple printing a hello. So let's inject logger first. And here we can log information printing hello for tenant. That's it. We can return task dot completed task. Our background action is simply printing hello. Let's create another one, which is print hi. Very similar one, just changing hello to hi and here printing hi. So now we have two different background services that we can run for multiple tenants. Let's go to the program.cs and register our actions. So builder.services.addscope i multi tenant action print hello action and another one print high action notice here we are registering the same interface for multiple classes multiple implementation and the way to inject the interface there is two way one way in dotnet 8 you can specify the type of that service that we don't need here the other is we can inject a list of i multi tenant action that we can loop through and execute. So if we go to the multi tenant background service, not what we are going to do here. So if we inject i enumerable of i multi tenant action, what we are saying is we can now loop through the actions and perform some operations for that action. Basically, something like for each actions action. And you can do await action dot execute. You pass the tenant and the cancellation token. That is what we need to do, but that will not work. Let's run. Notice that we have an exception. And the reason is we have services of type I multi tenant action that are registered as code but our multi-tenant background service is registered by default as singleton. So if we go to add hosted service code, you can see here we are adding things, adding background services as singleton. So in order to use a scoped service inside a singleton one, we need to use a different approach. So let's go to the background service. Instead of injecting list of actions, I'm gonna remove that for now. Instead, I'm going to inject iService provider. So every time we are running this code inside our loop, let's say in execute per tenant, we can use the service provider to create a new scope service and resolve our actions so we can execute them. To do that, var scope services equal service provider dot create. I'm gonna create the async scope. Now we have a scope service. We can now create var action equals scope service dot service provider dot get required services. I'm going to use required services because they need to be registered and we can specify the type as I enumerable of I multi tenant action. Now we have resolved the list of actions. We can loop through them and start executing. Now I'm going to run the code and it's working. Notice here we are printing hello for tenant I'm Gonna stop and let's check the log running multi tenant service running tenant one background service, we are still in the multi tenant background service class. And then we resolve the actions. The first one that was registered is the print hello action. So we are running print hello, running print high for tenant one, then we move to tenant two, we run for tenant two, run hello, run high, same thing for tenant three and so on. And so far so good. We have one multi-tenant background service that we can create 
and resolve multiple actions for multiple tenants. But now if you check the code, you can notice that printing hello, printing hi, they are running in sequential. We can improve that by running them in parallel using plink. So first thing, let's try to run all the action for a tenant in parallel. The way to do that, here action is a I enumerable of multi-tenant action. Prelink, which is the parallel link extension, can only apply to I enumerable link you query. So you can have var parallel actions equal actions dot as parallel. And you can now use the parallel action, the parallel query to run all the actions but note something here if you do a for each like we are doing here on top of the parallel action you are going to run it as sequential and we will not gonna benefit from the parallel query instead of for each we are going to use parallel actions dot for all and here for every action to action dot execute async and we can specify tenant and the cancellation token we are passing cancellation token to the execute async, but we also can inject cancellation token for all the parallel query that we are running by doing with cancellation and we can specify the cancellation token. Let me go back here and just implement small delay. So delay one seconds for print hello and let's delay one seconds for print high as well. And now let's run our application. I'm going to wait a few seconds and let's turn off and check the log. So running multi-tenant service, running for tenant one. Notice here, print hello, print hi, they are running, but we can't tell because, because we are not doing any significant action here. For that, I'm going to print the thread ID, the current running thread ID for every action so we can tell what thread is using that and running that method thread id we can use environment dot current manage thread id let's do the same for the other method as well now if we are on notice print hello print hi they are using different threads by doing as parallel like we did here the peeling will try to use all the available cores that we have we can limit the need of that by doing with degree of parallelism and you can specify the number of cores available for your peeling query let's say i need one or two or three depending on the use case so keep that in mind when dealing with peeling because it's not always efficient to use all your cores to run your peeling query we can also implement the same thing for the list of tenants here we can do tenants dot as parallel and you can specify with degree of parallelism let's say two we are we need to run only two tenants in parallel and we can do for all let's add for cancellation first with cancellation and for all we can do for tenant do execute per tenant and specify tenant and the stopping token here okay now run and now all the tenants will run or at least two because we specified only two parallel jobs to be run at the same time and you notice here we are running for tenant two tenant one tenant three at the same time pretty cool one additional thing that i want to do is the way that we are registering our multi-tenant background service let's refactor that by using an extension method so let's call the class extensions it's a static class and you can create the first one is a static that return a service collection and it's called add multi-tenant background service and for this one i'm going to have it on top of the app web application builder and you can do builder dot services dot add hosted service multi-tenant background service and then you can return builder dot services i'm going to show you why the extension method is on top of the web application builder and we are returning i service collection in a bit follow me for the end public static i service collection add action of t this is on top of the i service collection services make sure to specify the type of t as a class and as multi-tenant action and here you can do services dot try add enumerable 
of service descriptor dot scoped i multi tenant action t then return services go back to program dot cs now we can simply do builder dot add multi tenant background service dot add action the first one print hello and the other one add action print hi so now you can have one organized way to register your background services if we run everything should work as expected as well everything is running in multiple threads at the same time and this is how you can create multi-tenant background services in .NET. if you want a deep dive into background services check my other video here